just released a new album it's out on the 8th of march we are sampling a song this is our new anthem uh, i know you're gonna miss him yes i will go back to him every now and again but this is the new song it's a wonderful song you'll get it when it's released on the 8th please make sure that you download the song uh, from all the platforms it will be on the platforms uh, i'm excited about it i'm enjoying it you're gonna get to know it as we continue and you're gonna fall in love with it as well so we are blessed we are blessed thank you uh sandy Lekele, for giving us the the rights and the permissions to this song we that what an honor what a blessing uh to be able to be given the permission to to play this song so it's a new album it's coming soon here there he comes in thank you Postilla. you just missed the song i hope you didn't miss it uh we just finished playing the song i was just telling everybody about the new album we bless the lord for you thank you so much for giving us this beautiful music what an honor what a privilege i bless the lord for you thank you so much let me welcome everybody i see you guys are coming in kutu thank you baby bless you pastor zuki bless you woman of god prophet wendy bless you woman of god kanyisa bless you my baby toman wonderful to see you it's been a long time indeed it's so wonderful to see you no never bless you woman of god thank you nelly bless you my baby bless you woman of god uh apostle sima i bless you bless you uh cleo bless you you bless you spooky bless you my baby thank you story bless you man of god thank you oh woman of god diana oh so wonderful to have you this morning oh my god are you awake already <laughs> oh you're about to fall asleep or oh, you've just woken up good morning good morning it's afternoon with us god to have you bless you uh uh prophet anastasia bless you man of god elisha bless you bless you man of god you just came in bless you so much uh, uh prophet unati bless you woman of god i see you coming in as well i bless you it's a wonderful to be in the presence of god uh, this monday afternoon i'm so enjoying myself i'm sitting on the floor <laughs> i'm so comfortable i'm sitting on the floor a bit uh, tired and i didn't need the chair that let me just sit on the floor uh, so lisa bless you my baby i see you're coming in we have a wonderful message today uh silence silence this is a message that i preach uh, a few years back and it's a message that i love so much i have listened to it like twice in the last few two three months it's one of the of the few messages of mine that i can listen to i sometimes i can't listen to my voice it irritates me so much uh, but this is one of those that i listen to over and over again i love it so much and it's not on any of the platforms and this morning the holy spirit just led me uh, to speak about this message silence i preached with it at a conference a few years back as i said and it, it was awesome that's why i watch it over and over so some of you will never have the privilege of watching it because it's on my dvd uh, but those who are lucky enough to watch it uh, will watch it in my house but right now you're gonna get a uh, part of it a sample of, of of that message because i don't think i can take it like i took it on on a preaching platform but we're gonna get a, a, a bit of it it's called silence it is called silence i see some people are coming in if you will bless you uh who else noxy bless you bless you my baby Nabisa, bless you thank you guys for coming let's get to the message it's called silence let me read the first scripture it's in the book of genesis i think let me try and open these things, oh, sometimes these things have their own minds. 
Lala, let me see if I can get it here. Sometimes the phone has its own mind and it doesn't want to cooperate. Let me see. Genesis chapter... Genesis chapter 15... Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 to verse number 16. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 to verse number 16. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for 400 years your descendants will be strangers in the country, not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterwards they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure." And this word, God is speaking to Abraham and is telling Abraham that this is what's going to happen. You are going to be a nation for sure, but your descendants will be taken into, will be in a foreign country and will be slaves there for 400 years. And after a certain period of 400, of 400 years, I will set them free and I will release them to this land, which is the land of Canaan, which Abraham was possessing at the time, because the land of Canaan was given to Abraham before, so he walked to the land of Canaan and he built altars and he possessed that land for his descendants that were even not there at the time, he possessed the land. So when God was sending the nation of Israel uh, to the land of Canaan, it was already a land that he had given to Abraham many years ago. So they were possessing what Abraham had already possessed in the spirit by building the altars. So now God is saying to Abraham that this land I have given to you, but your descendants won't stay here. For 400 years, they will be slaves in another country. And after the period had lapsed, I will bring them back to this land. You will have long died by then but in the fourth generation that is a long time ago for it means people were living for 100 years at least minimum 100 years and then the next generation another 100 years so the lord is saying in 400 years they will come and possess this land today i want to speak about silence you know silence is not a a lack of of conversation silence is just a lack of sound uh, it doesn't mean that there's no speaking that is going on it's just there is no sound. That's what silence is. So when it is silent, it looks like nothing is happening, but really something is happening because the conversations are going on. If you look at people that are in love, for instance, those people can converse without any words. They can sit across the room from each other, but they will speak with their eyes and they will understand. Even friends can do that. They speak with eyes. It's worse with friends because they can gossip with, with eyes and and hands and, and stuff. They just can gossip with anything. So you can see that when there's silence, it does not mean that there's lack on, of conversation. So it is with us and God, when things look like they are silent around you, it does not mean there's no conversation that is going on. So when the people of Israel were slaves in the land of Egypt for 400 years, for them it looked like it was silent. It looks like it was nothing was happening. They were sitting there enslaved generation after generation. They probably did not even know. They were not even aware that there was a word that was going over them. And the word was that in 400 years, you will be set free from this land. You can imagine after the first generation that lay, that word was lost. It, nobody knew about that. I'm not even sure that in the first generation, they were aware that there was a word that has been released that in 400 years you will get out of this place. So you can imagine the first generation toiling and working hard in Egypt because it says that the Pharaoh that knew Joseph had gone and then another Pharaoh came who knew nothing about Joseph. So he oppressed the people of Israel.
Israel. So they continued oppressed, not knowing, thinking that God had forgotten them, thinking that they were abandoned in this foreign land by God. But they didn't know that there was a word that was echoing through generation. The word carried on. This voice of God was stretched over each generation. I'm sure each generation the word became louder, louder and louder until the time it has come down that the time had come 400 years had come the voice of God the word that he spoke to Abraham is loud now to them it is silent but the voice of God is echoing over them there's a word that has been released over them and the word is speaking and the word is counting down the time in their silence in their slavery in their pain in their oppression the word is counting down the time so in their silence in them thinking that God is silent. God is for forgotten about us. But God is saying, no, no, no. I have not forgotten about you. I have made a covenant with Abraham that I'm going to take you out of this place. But I had set a time. I don't know what time God has set for your own problem. You have problems that you have been praying about for God. But you don't know the time that is set upon that problem. That problem does have an expiry date. You can imagine you are a child of the promise. You are a child of the blessing. Blessings have been spoken upon you that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. But 400 years, nothing is shown. This word that you have confessed, that you have believed, that I am the head and not the tail, is not coming to pass. Thinking that you are abandoned, you are forgotten. But no, the word actually has an expiry date for every problem that we have. For every Everything that we go through, there is an expiry date in the midst of the silence. The expiry date, the clock is ticking and the time is going to come when that thing will come to an end. The time, you know, there's people that grew up very hard, having no parents, oppressed by relatives. And the relatives didn't know that this child is going to grow up. The clock is ticking. You may oppress this now because it's a child, but this child is going to grow up and one day this is not going to be a child this is going to be an adult who is going to be resourceful who can actually help you people didn't know that and the child did not even know that he thought that his life was this this was my life I was doomed to this I was doomed to this hate I was doomed to being unloved they didn't know that the clock was ticking 18 was coming when you're going to leave this family when you're going to leave these people to one is coming when you are going to get employment. Therefore, in the midst of looking like God is silent, no, 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 the clock was ticking. Silence didn't mean that there was no conversation going on. The conversation is going on in the spirit world about your life. The conversation is going on. I don't know what you had given up on thinking it's not going to happen anymore, but there's a conversation about your spiritual life. As long as you tarry in God, as long as you continue, God, the conversation keeps on going on. You are getting closer, my God. 400 years, you can imagine. They thought they would never see freedom again. But the word of God was continuing in the spirit world. And in a time that God has set the, 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 the silence was going to be no more. You know, there's, there's, there's something that I, I like talking about with, with my team, and, 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 I, and I know they love this. I love to talk about what we call umoya wentuku, the, the spirit of a mole, the spirit of a mole. You know, a mole, it works on the ground. It works on the ground, and on the surface, it looks like nothing is happening, but the mole is moving on the ground, and it's not only moving, it is covering ground. It's covering ground, and when you only see, you see the mole here as the evidence that there's a mole in this place, where there's nothing that tells us when we walk upon that ground that there's a being that is living under this ground, but the evidence is evidenced by the mole here. Therefore, it's like that. That's how God operates. He operates in a mole spirit where nothing, people look as if nothing is happening in your life, but there's something that is happening under the surface. God is busy 
changing. God is busy transforming. Day by day you are being transformed. Day by day your mind is being renewed. You think differently. You do things differently. You change your routine. And people think you are still living the same. They don't know the transformation. That under the ground, like a mole, God is making something. And when they see the mole here, pack up the evidence of what God is doing. They will think it is instant. They don't know that uh, in the midst of the silence, uh, under the ground, there was something that God was doing. We, you were moving with God and you were taking ground and you were taking territory. You were moving and you were moving. And by the time they see you, you are far in the distance and they don't know how you moved from point A to point B. In the midst of the silence, God was shifting you. You were shifting ground. You were moving ground. You were taking ground under the ground, moving and shifting. And things were happening under the ground, in the blindness, in the darkness of the earth. You were shifting when things were dark around you, but you were busy using your body, using the force of your body, using the strength that you have to shift things. You are weak sometimes, but you are shifting. You continue because with God by your side, you believe I can do all things with Christ that strengthened me. You use the word and you push and you believe that I can do all things. Nothing is impossible with God. With God by my side, I can move mountain. I can conquer. I am more than a conqueror. You are keep on confessing and pushing under the ground. People are looking and they're feeling sorry. They're feeling shame for you. But you know what God is doing. And by the time that look in the midst of that silence, they will see what God has done to you. That God has actually done a miracle. God has actually done great things in your life. Therefore, do not despise the silence that is going on. It doesn't mean that God is doing nothing. God is doing something in the midst of the silence. Silence does not mean lack of, of, of speech. It's just lack of sound. It does not mean lack of conversation. It's just lack of sound. God shuts down the sound. You too like a good talker. Nobody hears. Looks like nothing is happening. Looks like we are forgotten. Looks like we are abandoned. Quaker. Nothing is happening. The sound is shh. Whoosh. There's a shh going on around you. But God is busy in the midst of that. God is busy in the midst of that. I want us to go to Genesis chapter Genesis chapter number 40. No, let's go to Genesis chapter number 3, verse 7 to 10 first. Before we go to Genesis. Oh, no, no, Exodus. Let's go to Exodus 3, verse 7 to 10. So. The Lord said, Exodus 3, verse 7 to 10. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have had them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of this land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevers, and the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. The cry of the Israelites has reached me. And I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, sorry, go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, the, the people, the Israelites out of Egypt. So now is the end of 400 years. It's the end of 400 years. And God says, I have heard my cry. You know, when, when, when I read this, I, I learned something about God that, you know, they were, they were crying. I spoke about that. Your problem has an expiry date. And I learned that God is not moved by your cries and your, and your prayers before the expiry date. It's the word of God that continues to move on. Their cries were not doing anything to God. 
He had silenced their cries as much as they were crying. He had silenced their cries. And then 400 years later, 430 years later, actually, not even 400 like he had said, because he says, because God is a God of mercy. He said that I have not had them for 430 years because the, the, the sin of the Amorites had not come up to the standard. Because the, even those, those that God had to remove from the land, he needed a reason to remove them. He had given the land to Abraham, but these were still my people that are occupying the land. Therefore, I need a reason to move these people. I need a reason to destroy these people so that you may occupy the land. So Israel had to suffer in Egypt for 30 more years because God cared about these ites that were occupying the land because they are his people. The people that you hate, the people that have done bad things to you. They are still God's people. He still cares about you. The boss that is oppressing you, that is you praying so much that may God may this person move, may this boss move to another place and get another job so that I can be at peace at my workplace. That boss is also God's child. Therefore God cares about this one as much as he cares about this one. So Israel had to suffer 30 more years in the land of Egypt because the sin of the Amorites had not reached the levels where God would judge them because God is a fair judge. He is a just judge. He doesn't judge because me and you are saying them. No, no, no. The case is brought before him and as in a court of law, every side has to be listened to and he judges the weight of each side before he can judge. So they suffer for 40 years. So the fact that God is not answering your cries, this expiry date has not come. Therefore you can cry, you can pray, you can roll on the floor all you want until that expiry date comes. Now he has switched on the volume. Now he can hear the cry of the Egyptians of the, of the Israelites, sorry, because now the time has come to an and he goes to Moses and says, I have heard the cries of my people. These people have been crying for 430 years. He says now, because now it's God's time. Now it's God's time that he has decided. Now there's an expiry date has come upon your problem. Because remember, our problems are to mold our character. Our problems are to change us. Problems don't just come. They come to do something in us. There's something that God works through every trial that you go through, something is being worked in you. Your character is not because some of us are too arrogant. Therefore, God brings the trouble so that he may deal with your arrogance. Some are full of pride. God deals with you in that area so that he may deal with your pride. So the problem until, so the sooner you work with God in your problem, the sooner you work with God in whatever he needs to change you, it's it's going to help you. So the more you have not changed, it's the more the date is moved. It's the more you're going to stay in that place. So your tears, your cries, don't move God. He has the time. He's looking at you and he's saying, okay, I'm looking at the seam. He must take a certain shape. I still don't see the shape. Therefore, let's, let's move on. Let's forget about him. And then he looks again and thinks, oh, I see. The shape is now forming. Now I can consider that. So so they did not move God by anything until the time has come. He says to Moses, now I have heard the cries of my people 400 and something years later. You can imagine 400 years people crying and God has not heard anything. And he says years later that I have heard their cry. Now I have come to hear them. Now I have come to move. Now I come to move them into a land. Look at what he says. He says, I need them to, to, to get the best after their trouble. He says, I am moving them into a land flowing with milk and honey. So when you come out of the trouble, you don't just come into anything. You come into the best that God will. When you have come out of the trouble, having endured, having persevered, having formed the character, having been transformed and renewed, God brings you to the best because now you can fit the best of God. Now you have the shape for the best of God. Now the pride you have been dealt with the pride. Now you can come and be humble before God. God cannot use you unless you are humble enough. Now you, he can take you out and get you into a space that is flowing with milk and honey. Now you know 
what milk and honey is for. It is for the kingdom. It's not for your greed. It's not for your lust. Therefore, God now can move you into this land flowing with milk and honey because you have the shape, you have the form for the land of milk and honey. Now you know how to deal with the milk and honey. Therefore, God moved them into a beautiful land when he moved them from Egypt. They were not taken from slavery into misery. They were taken from slavery into prosperity. There was no misery in the land of, 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 of Canaan. They created misery by their doings. But God moved them to the land that was spacious, that had milk and honey and have everything good. Therefore, in the silence that God had about them, he was actually planning good things about them. In the midst of the silence, to them looking like it was silent, God was doing great things. He was preparing a spacious land. He was preparing good things for them. It even says that God left some of those people to live there so that the wild animals may not roam around. He left some of the Amorites in that land in order to protect Israel, to make sure that if people leave, the wild animals move in. So let me keep these people here until my people come. So my people, when they come, they still have these enemies to conquer because these enemies I have reserved for them to be protected so that lions and things and things don't move into the land. That's how good God is. He cares in the midst of the silence. God is preparing something good for you. Something good is coming your way. But you need to endure the silence. You need to persevere in the silence. You need to make sure you do not leave. You do not give up. You continue. You tarry. You, 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 you pray. You fast. You do all the things that you have to do until the expiry date comes. Until you are formed. Until your character is formed. Until God sees what he wants to see out of you. Genesis 40 verse 14. Genesis 40 verse 14. That's the next scripture. This is talking about Joseph. It says, Joseph is, was in prison. We know the story. He saves the, the, the wine taster and the baker. And he says to them when they leave prison. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show kindness Excuse me, mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of prison. That's what Joseph says to them. When everything goes well for you, this is what I have just interpreted your dreams. This is what's going to happen to you. Go, you are getting out of this prison. But when everything goes well with you, I, I don't know how many people we have helped. <laughs> and we thought when everything goes well with them, they will at least remember us. Poor Joseph has the same sentiment, thinking that I have done so good for them, interpreting these dreams, and everything goes according to the dreams. I prophesied to these people, and everything I have prophesied had come to pass. And I thought when everything goes well with them, they will remember me. Joseph said, when you get before Pharaoh, when everything for you is going well, please mention me to Pharaoh. That's all he's asking for. He's asking for a mention. Don't do anything. Don't beg for Just mention my name in front of Pharaoh. And don't, do you think that these people will come and go to Pharaoh and say, Yo, this man, don't forget this man. Please, Pharaoh, this man help me. There was silence. <laughs> silence. <laughs> and Joseph, I can imagine Joseph in that prison. Every day, uh, the, 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 the prison officials come. He's thinking, today is my day. Today is my day. They surely have mentioned me too far and nothing. <laughs> I think it says two and a something years go by and the silence. I don't know how you forget something for two and a something years. I mean, you are out of prison. Like, every day you should be grateful and remembering. But there was silence. And Joseph 
thought that God had forgotten him. He thought that God had abandoned him. He thought that everything about me, I'll die in this prison. I'll die in Egypt. Nothing is going to happen with me. In the midst of that silence, God was preparing something great for Joseph. In the midst of that silence, God was cooking something so big that Joseph's mind could not have conceived what God was doing. My God, God was preparing to, 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 to surprise and, and shock everybody. He would have shocked Potiphar's wife and Potiphar who put him in prison because now Joseph is going to come out of prison and rule over Potiphar and his wife, the ones who put them in prison. God was was going to like dumbfound everybody in Egypt by what he was going to do in the midst of the silence the pot of God was being cooked he was preparing a table in the presence of Joseph's enemies and he was going to anoint Joseph with oil and his cup was going to overflow to the whole world like the whole world was going to uh, was going to benefit from the cup of Joseph and Joseph was thinking it is silent but the pot, a table was prepared. There was some cooking going on behind the scenes. There were tables being laid behind the scenes. The servants of heaven were busy preparing to lay this table. And every enemy of Joseph, his brothers, Potiphar and his wife, everybody was going to sit at the table that God was preparing for Joseph in the midst of the silence. In the midst of the silence. So Joseph is thinking that uh, there's, there's nothing but there's a conversation. Silence does not mean that there's no conversation going on. It doesn't mean that there's nothing going on. God is speaking. The angels are busy. There's movement. Instructions are going around you. Things are being prepared around you. And you think God has forgotten me. No. Silence does not mean forgotten. For silence does not mean forgotten. If Joseph had been released by, by this man, he would have gone to back to this land of Canaan by shame of Pharaoh. Pharaoh would have felt sorry for him and that was not God's plan. God did not mean for Joseph to live out of Pharaoh's sorry and shame. No, no, no. God had a plan for Joseph to take over Egypt. If he had been released at that time, he would have gone back to his land, to his family. And that was not God's plan about him. That for what you want now, you think it's right now. And God is saying, no, no, no. If you knew that you want to settle, and I don't mean for you to settle. I have something bigger for you. No settling, no settling. Don't settle. No, no, no. Don't say yes to this man because you are desperate. Don't marry this girl because you are desperate. No, your wife is coming. Your husband is coming. I have something bigger and better for you. Don't go and make somebody pregnant because your wife is not having kids. No, no, no. Don't settle for Ishmael. I have an Isaac for you. Don't, don't make the mistake. I'm not silent. I am busy. I am busy. I am busy. I am preparing something great for you. Something great is coming, Joseph. You are the ruler. You are the ruler of Egypt. You are the, yes, you, you Joseph, the prisoner now in this foreign land. You will rule this foreign land. You are going to take over that company. You're going to rule. You're going to be the CEO in that company. I'm no, it looks far-fetched. It sounds far-fetched. It sound would have sounded far-fetched to Joseph. Had God told him that you're going to rule Egypt, it would have been so far-fetched. If I tell you today that you're going to rule, you're going to take over. Yes, it looks like it will never happen because you do not qualify for it. But God said it. And if God said it, it shall be so. No man can stand against what God says. If he has said it, he said so. Therefore, 
for Joseph thought he God was silent. God was not silent. He was preparing something great for him. Therefore, the silence of God over your life, it does not mean God has forgotten you. It does not mean that you have been abandoned in that prison, in that abuse, in that home, in that poverty, in that sickness, in that lack. It does not mean that God has abandoned you there. No, no, no. He's preparing something great. He's preparing something big. What God has for you in his heart, you cannot conceive, you cannot, your mind cannot even think where you are going to stay. You've been homeless for too long, but your mind cannot conceive the place where God is taking you, the house that you're going to live in. You cannot even dream of that house. Yes, your mind cannot even dream of the house where the Lord wants to settle you. Great are the things that God has in his heart for you, but you need to be patient with God and know that in the midst of the silence, it does not mean that God has forgotten you, but he is busy with something that is great for you, that is prepared, that is perfect for you. God has something very, very perfect for you in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 1 verse number 20. Luke chapter 1 verse number 20 and then it says, and now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day happened because you did not believe my words which will come true at their appointed time. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words which will come true at their appointed time. He shuts the mouth of Zechariah to be silent because he didn't want to, him to mess up this thing with his unbelief. And he says that, that this thing that I've spoken, it's going to come true, but it has an appointed time. You are not going to short circuit this one. You're not going to shortcut this one. It has an appointed time, but it needs to be accompanied by silence. Lord, not speak over this one. I'm not going to speak. You're not going to speak. We're going to be silent over this one. For this one to be bad, it needs to be covered. It needs to be to be hidden under the ground like the mold that I was talking about. We need to hide this one for its bathing. It's like a plant. It needs to be under darkness. It's like a photo developed in the olden days. It needs a dark room, this one. No snow words. No said, let's darken this one for to be best. This one needs to go in the womb where the silence let this darkness for it to be best. Therefore, we're gonna cover this one in the womb with silence. We're not gonna, gonna say things. I will say now that this is what's gonna happen. After that, it's gonna be quiet. No one talk. You don't talk. I don't talk until it's appointed time. This has an appointed time. Somebody, let me tell you, your problems have an appointed time. The God is not silent, but he's brewing the thing. It is hidden for a while. Therefore, God is saying, don't also, don't speak over it. Also, be quiet over it. Just shut up, shut up. If you have nothing good to say, shut up over this thing. Don't speak over it because I have this case in my hand, but it has an appointed time. Therefore, the Lord shut Zachariah's mouth because he was going to speak over this thing. And God says, this one needs silence. This thing that you need to be silent, you don't even need to argue. Oh, if the Lord could teach us not to argue about everything and just in some things, just remain silent. Let them accuse you, let them say things, and just remain silent. And let the conversation happen in the spirit. Let God vindicate you. Let God speak for you. Let God fight for you. Just remain silent. There's some battle that will win in silence. Oh, Lord, teach me to be silent. Oh, God, teach me to be silent. There's battles that will win in silence. Be still. I will fight for you. 
We should learn that God needs sometimes for us to be still, to sit there like, like dumb. Okay, if you can, oh Lord, if, if I could, you can make me like be dumb sometimes and act like I, I don't care. Like if, if only I could learn that skill. Of, of just sitting there and looking like you dumb sometimes and let people walk all over you. And let God vindicate you. So he does that. He says, shh. Said to Zachary, shh. This one will be birthed only in silence. This battle will be won only in silence. Shut up. I shut up at its appointed time. People will see the fruit of this thing. At the appointed time. We must learn that. At the appointed time. There is an appointed time for your problems and your trouble to come to an end. In the book of Lamentation. So you are asking, how should I do this? How do I become quiet when I have so much that is going on? How do I not complain and feel that the years have gone by and I'm stagnant and I'm stuck in this one place? Like how? How do I do that and not complain when nothing good happens around me? How do I not complain? How do I remain silent? How do I know that God is silent around my problem but he's taking care of it. Lamentations 3 verse 26 it says it is good that one should wait quietly <laughs> for the salvation of the Lord. <laughs> it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Lamentations 3 verse 26 <laughs> it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And it's not saying it is easy. It's just that it is good. <laughs> it's not saying that it is possible. It's just saying it is good. Good for you to wait quietly. <laughs> good for me. Good for you, consumer, to wait quietly. Oh, Lord, teach me to wait quietly. Oh, Lord, teach me to wait quietly. <laughs> it is good. <laughs> it is good that we should wait quietly for the Lord. Knowing that he's believing that God is doing something God cares about. If we could believe that really God cares about us more than we care for ourselves. Like he gave us his only begotten son. Who, who does that? Who would give his Would you give your son to be killed for South Africa? No, I wouldn't. No. I wouldn't give my child to be sacrificed for South Africa. No, I wouldn't. We should trust God so much that we know that this man cares for me more than I care for myself. This man wants what's good for me more than I understand what is good for me. He knows what's good for me more than I do. He created me. This man has the manual for my life. He knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. Therefore, he has the manual. Therefore, when he's silent, he had ordered that when he created me. That in this moment, there'll be silence in her, in her life. And then, there'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll start again. And then, there'll be these moments of, of silence. God knew them before he formed me in my mother's womb. He knew these moments. If he could only knew, know that and, and conceive how much God cares and knows us. We will know that it is good to wait quietly. <laughs> To wait, mm. Mm. wait, the Lord. waiting upon the Lord quietly, no murmuring, no murmuring, just waiting quietly upon the Lord. Psalms one for one, verse three. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. <laughs> Ah, David is talking to people like me now <laughs> who like to talk, who just cannot. Like, I don't have a car. I complain all the time. Oh, Lord, I need a car. Like, I need to be quiet right now. The Lord needs, knows I need a car. He knows I need a car. He says, set a guard.
blood, O oh Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. It's the door. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Oh. He, he said, said God over my mouth. Keep watch over the door. It's a door. So you think you are releasing things, but things are coming into you. <laughs> oh, Lord. You not only, when you open it, you think you are talking, eh? It's a door. Demons are coming in because now there's a conversation with demons and they're coming to entertain the food that is coming out. It's a door. It's not only something that you use to release. It's also a door. Let me read this word again. Set a guard, O oh Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. It's a door. It's not only a mouth. It's a door. So the more you speak, the more demands are invited to come and, 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 and have conversations with you. So in being quiet actually helps us. Wait on the Lord. Quietly. <laughs> Wait on the Lord. Quietly. <laughs> Lord have mercy on us. Wait quietly. It is a door. Isaiah 53 verse 7. <laughs> he says he was oppressed. And he was afflicted. That is Jesus now. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. <laughs> oh Jesus. May we learn from you. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Going through everything that you think I'm going through a lot. I cannot be silent. No, no, no. You can't tell me that I'll be silent. He was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. And like a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. If he could do it, we can do it. <laughs> and I'm sure my oppression and my afflictions, I don't have 38 stripes on my back. So and my afflictions cannot be combated. I'm telling you, they cannot be combated. If you watch the Passion of the Christ, you know that your afflictions cannot be compared. You know that. So if he could be silent in those things, if he could remain quiet and, and trust God and trust the process and knowing that this is an, an appointed time and this is an expiry day, I'm going to endure this. Three days I'm going to go to the ground and three days later I will arise. If he knew that and he, he, he went through it quietly, we can go through anything quietly and wait upon the Lord with our mouths shut. It is possible to be silent in the midst of trouble. The last scripture, Psalm 62, verse 5. For God alone, O oh my soul, waits in silence, for my hope is from him. For God alone, he is the only time that we have to wait in silence. For God alone. Wait in silence, for my hope is from him. That's what David says. Only for God I will wait in silence, because my hope is on him. Therefore, silence does not mean that nothing is happening. It means that you have to endure the process and trust in the processes of God, knowing that he is each thing has an appointed time that your deliverance has an appointed time your success has an appointed time your failures also have an appointed time to end 
God cares. We remember that God cares. He cares. If you could carry that in a mind that I have a God that cares. I have a God that loves me unconditionally. Nothing that I do fails me from the love of God. He loves me unconditionally. There is no time where I do not qualify for his love. That price has been paid 2,000 years ago. So that, that is not even negotiable. It's been paid, settled, it is finished, it is done. So in the midst of, my, of the silence, let me not curse God like Job. And let us say, my, I know, I know my Redeemer lives like Job. We have not gone through what Job went through. But he said, I know my Redeemer lives having lost children, lost everything, wealth. Job was a billionaire. He lost everything. But he said, I know. He knew what he knew. How can we not know? Why do we go back? See, I'm people going back to go and slaughter cows and, and, and go back to idol worship. What did you know? How is it that easy to go back and slaughter cows and, and stand in a crawl and speak to, to poles and stupid things? How much did you know? Job says, I know my Redeemer lives. What did you know? Why fall so easily? It means you knew nothing. You didn't know this God that you are following. Therefore, even if he is silent, know what you know. So this today is to make you know that even in these months, in these years, that nothing has happened in your life, know what you know. Do not be moved. Do not be shaken. Stand your ground and believe. And when you are done standing, you stand again because you know what you know. So God is raising the knower in us to know that my Redeemer lives and he will not fail me. He will not abandon me. He has promised that I will never leave nor forsake you. Even in times when I feel that today I feel the dark cloud all over me. I feel like I'm forsaken. But the knower will tell me that no, he is Emmanuel. He is God with you. Therefore he can never leave. He can never forsake you. Before he came on the cross he was Emmanuel. He is God with you. He's Jehovah Mikarov. His God is nearby. He's closer to the broken hearted. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So there is no time when he leaves you. When you are broken hearted and you are shattered, he is closest to you. Let us have the Noah in the midst of the silence. We have experienced so much silence. I think that's why I love this message. I watch it over and over again because there's been so much silence in my life. For years, nothing is happening. But I always let the Noah remind me who is this God that you are talking about. He is a God. You forgot the Israelites in Egypt for 430 years. But when he took them out, he took them out in a spectacular spectacular way. He gave them gold. He gave them riches. They went in a land where grapes are like the head of, of a child. He gave them things when he took them out. David says, when, when our fortunes were turned, it was like we were in a dream. That's the kind of God we serve. When he turned our fortunes around, it was like we were in a dream. Like they couldn't believe the things that we experienced when the fortunes were turned. That's the kind of God. He will turn your fortunes and you will be like you are dreaming. You will try and, 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 and try and, and think, I, am I alive? Am I, is it me who is experiencing this? That, those are the things that we need to think about. Those are the thoughts we need to occupy ourselves about. Not the negative thoughts that are around us. Take the good thoughts and occupy and, and put them before us. And let them, us know who we are serving. What are the possibilities? When he says no. Nothing is impossible with me. Let us know what it means. Go get the scriptures to let us know what it means when he says nothing is impossible. This man opened up the Red Sea. He opened the river Jordan. He got water out of the rock. This is the God we serve who followed people with a cloud by night and the fire a cloud by day and the fire by night. Who let people walk in shoes when they were one until they were forty wearing the same shoe. It is impossible. This 
is that God that we serve. The God who came and said to a man, stretch out your hand and the hand was stretched and the hand becomes straight. Who comes to a, a funeral and he lays hands and the boy and says, arise and the boy wakes up. He comes to Jairus' daughter, his dad, and he says, he gives a hand. Little girl, I say unto you, arise and this child arise. He comes to Lazarus who's been dead for four days. He stands before a grave and says, Lazarus, come out and Lazarus, come out of the grave. This is the God that we need to remember and have in the forefront of us in the midst of the silence when everything, all hell is breaking loose against you. Remember who this God is. Remember who this God is. Let's not forget who we are serving. We are serving a great God. We are serving a mighty God. We are serving a God of the impossible. Nothing is impossible with him. Who made a virgin pregnant with a child and the child came out bones and all. A child came out out of a virgin. That is the God who does the miraculous things like that. That is the God we serve. The God of the Bible. Why then do we carry the Bible if we do not believe? Why are we Bible preaching Christians if we do not believe this Bible? This is the God that we serve. He can do all things. All things. When he says all things, he can do all things. He sent the disciple to go into the sea and take a fish and get a denarius out of their mouth. This is the God who does all things. All things are possible with him. Therefore, I don't know what silence you have been going through. But today, God wants you to know that silence does not mean a lack of conversation. It doesn't mean that you are forgotten. It doesn't mean that you are abandoned. It doesn't mean that God cares not about you. God still cares. And every trouble has its appointed time. Every trouble has its expiry date. And in the fullness of God's time, he will take you to your promised land. He will take you out. He will put your feet on a solid rock to stand and we will put a song of praise in your heart. He will take you out of that mud in the appointed time. Therefore, let's hang on to God. Let's wait upon the Lord and trust him that our hope is only in you. Only you can take me out of this. We have things that we know for sure that no man can take us out of these things. No man, like, like the places we are stuck in, no man can take us out of this thing. Only only God can do it. Only God. We, some of us know that. That Only you, Lord, can take me out. Only you can help me out of this. Nobody can help me out of this. It's only by your might that by you can take me out of this. It's only by your spirit that you can do it. Nobody can do it. No man can do what you can do for me. We need to trust this God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We thank you for your promises. They are yes and they are amen. Lord Jesus, your promises, they are yes and they are amen. That's all we need to know. That's all we need to believe. That nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too difficult for you, Lord Jesus. Your, your voice, oh, it breaks the cedars of Lebanon. Therefore, when you do speak, Lord Jesus, when you do speak in the midst of the silence, but when you do speak, your voice breaks the cedars of Lebanon. It, 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 it bears the forest. It, 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 it does the impossible. It, it shakes the mountain. When you spoke at Mount Sinai, the mountain shook and the people ran away. Strips the forest bare. That is your voice. Therefore, when you speak, Lord, oh God, your voice will do the impossible. Therefore, we need to wait upon you in the midst of the silence that we are going through, in the midst of the silence that we are experiencing. We need to wait upon you. Therefore, we will wait upon you, Lord. We will wait upon you, trusting that you are preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And they will come and partake of what you are doing with us. We bless you, Father. We honor you. We thank you for this word. A fresh word from you. A fresh word from the throne of grace. 
I know it was for somebody today. If somebody wanted to give up, I know it was for someone. It was not just a word. We thank you, Lord, for the transformation, the renewing of a mind that you have done to somebody today. Lord, be thou glorified, be thou praised, be thou worshipped. We honor you, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, saints. Let me see those who came in late. Sianda, bless you, my baby. Nandipa, bless you. Thank you. Who else came in? Masivuya, bless you. Sister Lassam, thank you. Tebi, bless you. Thank you. Uh, those things are becoming. Uh, no, no, Dayo, bless you, men of God. Wow. What an honor to see you. Thank you. Dr. Tula, bless you. Uh, who else? Uh, these things are becoming foggy by the second. I'm sweating, so my temperature is high. Who else is here? Tuli, bless you, my baby. Long time. I'm so lele, bless you. Lom Sam, bless you. Sam, Sam, Luto, bless you. Uh, Wizzy, well, bless you, darling. You been a long time. Uh, Don't be bless you, bless you, man of God. Uh, Fagu, bless you. Who else? The uh, well, bless you, bless you. Thank you. Kaulezi. Oh, Kaulezi, bless you. Oh, wow, bless you. Nice to see you. Who else? Let me wipe those things again and see who else was there. Viewer, bless you. Ah, uh, Sonwa, we bless you, man of God. Oh, Confim, we will bless you, Confim, if it's you. I saw last week it was you. Uh, Linda, hey, woman of God, bless you. you so wonderful to have you, man. Been a long time. Uh, thank you. Stemagasi, uh, bless you. Uh, uh, I think. Bulelwa, bless you. Trying to see who else. Don't want to miss anybody. Oliswa, bless you. Thank you. Uh, Senzo, bless you. Uh, uh, I think that's all. That's everybody. Uh, Solani, bless you. Bless you, Solani. Uh, Bora, bless you. Nonche, bless you, woman of God. Tuliswa, bless you. Wendy, I think. Uh, I think that's all. Kanyisa, bless you. Not Cindy, so bless you, my baby. Oh, Matapelo, oh my God, bless you, baby. You. Collect dialogue. Nabila Nwabisa, bless you, Sterosa. I think that. I think that's everybody. Yeah, that's everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bless you. Hope you had a wonderful time. Bless you. Cleopatra, I saw you.